this is one of the most dangerous and untrue quotes of Swami Bhaktivedanta. Here's an example. Hi, my name is Henry Jodicaire. I'm a French Canadian psychotherapist and my special field of interest is brainwashing and mind control by cults. In 1969 I met Swami Bhaktivedanta in Los Angeles. I was 19 years old and I decided to follow him, to serve him. I got initiated and I was then sent in England and France and India and Singapore and Malaysia and Thailand and Indonesia and then all over South America. For several years when I travel in Asia, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, I travel with a guy whose name was Bali Mardan. There he is, Bali Mardan William Berkey. And I will tell you the story because it's a funny story and a tragic story. Many people today think that Swami Bhaktivedanta was pure, perfect that he could see right into the soul of each and every one, that he was totally enlightened, and that every move that he did was completely guided by Lord Krishna. So after being a few years traveling around with Bali Mardan, William Burke, we ended up in Sydney, Australia together and one day Swami Bhaktivedanta asked him and asked me to take sannyas, to become monks for life. So we did. In a great ceremony, I promise and he promised that we would serve God forever and that we would never have sex again ever. A few weeks later Swami Bhaktivedanta learned that I spoke Spanish so he sent me to Open Center in South America and a year after I learned that my friend Bali Mardan was no more a sannyasi, was no more a monk. That Swami Bhaktivedanta had given him permission to marry because the person that he was to marry was the heiress of the Toyota company. And I was in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I got pretty upset. I just could not understand why if I fell in love with someone, which I did in South America, I could not marry her. But Bali Mardan, William Berkey could get married because he had found someone that was according to him a billionaire this was the biggest scam that swami bhaktivedanta experienced in his life in the Hare krishna movement so there is still on youtube the faithful marriage cut on video so here's a few clips of it Swami Bhaktivedanta was so perfectly scammed that 
he was present at the wedding ceremony of Bali Mardan and Mrs. Toyota to give a special blessing. Bali Mardan was such a good liar, such a great deceiver, that he convinced Swami Bhaktivedanta and all the leaders of the Hare Krishna movement that his wife was about to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in the Hare Krishna movement. He even made Swami Bhaktivedanta visit a cathedral in New York that he said he was planning to buy. These two scammers even bow down to the Guru and to Sri Krishna as a sign of surrender. But it turned out that all the money was actually stolen from the New York temple. At that time, there was a couple hundred devotees traveling all around the East Coast of America, bringing hundreds of thousands of dollars a month to the New York temple. And Bali Mardan was simply stealing the money from the coffer of the Hare Krishna movement. It was discovered that his wife was not the heiress of the Toyota organization, but was a prostitute from Chinatown in New York City. When the scam was discovered by Swami Bhaktivedanta, he immediately asked Bali Mardan to go away, but he did not call the police because he knew that all the money that was coming in the New York temple was made with all kinds of scams, undeclared money. Bali Mardan knew that also, and he just plundered the New York Hare Krishna temple. So I'm telling you that story for one reason. A few weeks ago I met some devotees of Krishna in the streets somewhere in America that are now disciple of disciple of Swami Bhaktivedanta and Swami Bhaktivedanta has become an icon. They believe that he is so pure so saintly, so extraordinary that he never made a mistake while he was alive until 1977. But those of us who know the story knows that he made a lot of mistakes. And this was one proof that he was not scam proof and many other scams have happened around the world so the moral of the story is that don't believe that Swami Bhaktivedanta or anyone for that matter is pure perfect without faults use your intelligence to judge what is right and what is wrong do not believe because you've been asked to believe. Because some disciple of disciple of Swami Bhaktivedanta is telling you how this is, this is the truth. He was perfect. He never made a mistake. He was a pure representative of Krishna himself. Don't lose your intelligence 
question everything. I am happy to have met Swami Bhaktivedanta for he basically gave me the basic teaching of Hinduism that are still very important to me and as far as I'm concerned they are the same basic teaching of Buddhism which I am very involved with. The belief in enlightenment and the belief of karma and the belief that we are much more than this material body.